from a very young age, uh, we see probably in ourselves, <clears throat> or maybe in nieces, nephews, or children, if you have them, which none of you do, uh, that we very quickly develop this mentality that I want things for me. So I see ice cream, I want an ice cream for me. I see, <clears throat> when I get older, I see clothes that are now in fashion or whatever, so I want them for me. Uh, when I get older again, I see a big house or a stylish car or whatever it is, and I want that for me. And uh, I see someone whose career is going well, and I want that for me. And it's not really, it's never really kind of said, but basically, it's, if you keep doing things for me, for yourself, uh, that's selfish, right? <laughs> Let's just call a spade a spade, right? So if you keep doing things just for yourself, then we, we learn to live this somewhat selfish life, okay? And that's, it's kind of normal. Dare I say it's even encouraged in the business world in that, I mean, you know, you do what you have to do, you get ahead, you, you push on, uh, you achieve, uh, you do what you have to do. And even the, the expression, I can be a self-made man and all this kind of stuff. You know, you do what you do, do what you need to do uh, in order to uh, uh, achieve your goal uh, for, for yourself, for yourself. Now, what's interesting if we look at Christmas, and then we look at something a little deeper in a second. Uh, if you look at Christmas, it's Jesus' birthday, but but we get the presents. It's Jesus' birthday, but we get the presents. So it seems like in God's head, something is different here. God already owns everything, so God doesn't have to grab anything for himself. So God's mentality is that <clears throat> everything that exists is for everyone else. All that exists is is for is a gift all that exists is for everyone so if we try to apply that because remember uh, our goal as christians is to become more christ-like to become more like the lord to think like the lord act like the lord react like the lord uh, to be one day taken into him taken into his, his his mystical body in a in a in a perfect way in heaven so we have to become like him which means that everything that you've been given isn't for you Everything, that, all the gifts that you have even, aren't for you. All the graces that you receive are for you, yes, but also for others. So, I mean, if you've been given the gift of mercy, if you've been forgiven, of course, that, that, that is for you, but also then that you may be a sign of mercy to others. So everything we've received, everything that surrounds us, isn't actually for us. It's kind of this, this natural mentality that we have to learn to overcome through virtue, uh, that that all that exists isn't simply for me, for my pleasure, for my wealth, for my acquisition, uh, for my power. No, all that exists is to serve God. So all that I have is a gift, or should be a gift for others. And when you apply this like in very specific things, it, 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 it really highlights how skewed our mentality can become. That means then that your intelligence isn't given to you just for you either. Uh, your intelligence is given to you for others, ultimately for the building up of God's kingdom, but you can use it in all sorts of ways, like to do good, right? So the way you think, the way you have clarity of thought, you can hear a problem and just the solution to you, you can just, I can just see the solution. Why can't everyone see the solution here? The solution is really obvious. You know, you just have the kind of clarity of thought. Some people have that. Some people can only see the problem and the consequences of the problem and the consequences of the consequences of the problem. And then when they think of a problem, they just see, Spaghetti, just everywhere, <laughs> right? And there's no clarity of thought. Okay, I'm sure they have gifts. They have, they have other gifts. Uh, some people can just go, this is the problem, this is the solution, get that done, and all of this never happens. Uh, so, using our gifts to, to, to build up God's kingdom. Musical ability. Again, I've mentioned this before, like, but uh, the gift of music isn't given to you just for your daily 10 minute shower where you sing away to yourself. The gift of music is given to you for others. So that when people hear a beautiful voice or beautiful music, it lifts their, their heart to kind of almost, it almost transcends the world here and lifts our hearts to something more, more beautiful, more heavenly, hopefully heaven itself. So uh, even that gift uh, isn't given to us just, just for a career <clears throat> or a hobby. It's given to you for God. Dare I say a lot of these gifts are even on loan, because they're, they're things we won't always have. <coughs> Excuse me. 
our minds <clears throat> will eventually not be quite as sharp as they used to be. Our bodies definitely will not always uh, be as, as quick as they presently are. <clears throat> our singing voices may eventually go. Another interesting one is uh, the gift, for example, of good looks. You might say, well, so that's in fairness, that one now, that's just for the person themselves. No, nope, not even that. Not even that. I remember a couple of days ago when we were celebrating St. Bridget. St. Bridget, it's, legend has it, was quite an attractive lady and asked the Lord to remove her good looks, uh, which he apparently, Judy did, and then she got them back when she became a sister. Uh, so e even that then, that like someone would look at this, this attractive lady and say, she could have been married to all sorts of chieftains around the place, and yet she has decided to give her life to God. That in itself is a statement. Uh, we used to be able to do light fever and night fevers. I've used this example before, uh, but we have one or two uh, girls in our mission team here, and they would go out to a bunch of lads out on a Friday night or a Saturday night and say, hi, and if you guys want to light a candle in the church, and the lads would kind of stand there, somewhat kind of typical lads just kind of gobs open, basically staring at them, just kind of, uh, light a candle. Uh, yeah, uh, uh, are you going to be there? Yep, sure, I'll show you where the church is, so you just follow me, and, uh, and away they'd go in, and so I'd be in the church, I like, hear confessions or playing music, and one or two of these girls would come in, like, and there'd be a stream of ten lads behind them, and they'd come into the church, they'd light their candle, they'd say a little prayer, the opportunity for confession is there, but they've done something <clears throat> Catholic, on a drinking night, you know? So God can use good looks for the building up of his kingdom, absolutely. Even that, that, those, that gift, it's a gift, you can't do anything about it, you just, if you're built that way, you're built that way. Uh, use that for the building up of God's kingdom. It's just, it's amazing. Like, everything we have, everything we have can be given back to God. Everything we have is supposed to be given back to God. Because we're not supposed to hold on, grab on to anything. We, we, by the end of our lives, we should be free of all of these things. So that Jesus is our all in all. That Jesus is enough for us. So that we recognize that everything that we have was a gift. Not for us, but for everyone else. And as long as I need that gift, <clears throat> I'll have that gift. And then eventually that gift, I won't need it anymore. Or I'll have to learn to actually give it back. And then I'm, I'm free. So I'll have spent my life building up God's kingdom. And then I'm ready for, for heaven. Whereas if we get attached to <clears throat> having to have more, having to look a certain way, having to have a certain house, having to have a, a certain career, whatever it is, then I'm just grabbing onto this world as, as I'm trying to get to heaven and just, just won't let go. Just won't let go. And that's unhappiness. That might even be hell. So all that we have been given is for others. And in scripture as well, it's always very, very clear <clears throat> that anyone who has received a special grace from God, a special revelation of God's presence, was also given a mission by him. So if the Lord kind of appeared to someone, think, think of your, your Noah, Moses, Abraham, uh, <coughs> Joseph, anybody who, who receives a particular re revelation of God is also given a mission. Have we not received a particular revelation of God? Can we receive... Sacrament of baptism, our sacraments of initiation, <clears throat> we received the Eucharist. Have we then not received a particular revelation of God in our hearts? And therefore, are we not all called, like in our gospel today, to go out and witness to the power of the Lord, to the healing grace that only he can give? To whom much is given, much is expected. And the Lord has given us his very life. So we ask the Lord today to form missionary hearts, form our hearts to be missionary hearts. Form new disciples, Lord, in the world. That your church may be renewed, that all may come to discover you as their Lord, their Savior, and their God. Amen.